get a chance to go to Ipswich to visit the University of Southern Queensland, you'll see the grounds of what was once the Challenor Centre, a place where people with intellectual disability were institutionalised. From 1968 onwards, the Challenor Centre was the so-called home of up to 530 people with intellectual disability. It was a place where people were warehoused, often treated as subhuman, and denied the opportunity to have a meaningful life in their local communities. Many residents with intellectual disability spent life-wasting days of inactivity. Some people were heavily sedated by staff, and others were locked up in cages. People were treated like animals, out of sight and out of mind to the general public. Places like the Chalinor Centre were set up to fix the problem of intellectual disability. But in fact, people with intellectual disability were not the problem. The problem was society's ignorance, disrespect and intolerance. The Chalinor Centre and other places like it failed to honour the voice, wisdom and experience of people with intellectual disability. Yet this set the groundwork for people to fight back and to make change. Donna Best is a self-advocate with intellectual disability who worked hard to make change for people with a disability during this time. My name is Donna Best. I am a four-decade-down self-advocate and still have the fight in me. I want to share with you the beginnings of the road of self-advocacy in Queensland. It started on the map of Queensland in Ipswich. In Queensland history, Ipswich was the home for two big institutions, the Challoner Centre and Basil Stafford Centre. Still to this day, when I go near Challoner Centre, I get a shiver up my spine and I have it in the back of my head, get me out of here! But at this time, in the early 80s, at the Challoner Centre, residents started to speak out. And history tells us that there was a group of people from Challoner Centre went to Wagga Wagga to a conference for people with intellectual disabilities. From this event, a group of South Africans was formed. I became the president of GADAP in Ipswich. GADAP stands for Greater Achievement for Disadvantaged People. I spoke about people with intellectual disabilities that were denied their rights to live in the community like others. Gadot was involved in street marches, writing letters to the government, fundraising and having a say in, in our lives and the policy of the day. I used to travel to Ipswich every Monday night to go to a Gadot meeting because there was nothing like, like this in Brisbane. It meant a lot to me because I built up relationships with people and with a group was committed to working together to bring change for us and others. This is my early achievement. I got GADA its first funding from the federal government. This was the start of my 40-year journey as a South African. If you'd have met me in the early days, I wouldn't have said boo to anyone. Donna found her voice. She became active in supporting other disability advocacy groups to start up in Queensland, including Queensland Advocacy for Inclusion, Queensland Parents for People with a Disability, and SUFI, otherwise known as Speaking Up For You. These groups recognised and respected Donna's leadership. I was a member of one of these groups, Queensland Parents for People with a Disability, and that was where I first met Donna. Donna showed me, as a young parent, that I didn't need to live in fear about the future for my son, Aidan, who has an intellectual disability. She showed me that Aidan could have a good life. And she still advocates on his behalf. The Chalinor Centre was closed in 1998. Things were starting to change for people with intellectual disability and there were more options around home. 
but more needed to be done. Today, there are still so many issues facing people with intellectual disability. We know that today, people with intellectual disability often experience more negative and potentially traumatising life experiences than many other people. These experiences include violence, abuse, poverty and social isolation. I'll give you an example of an issue facing people with intellectual disability. Did you know that the Queensland Criminal Code 1899 section 216 makes it illegal for anyone to have intimate relations with a person who has impairment of the mind. This law affects many people with intellectual disability and it is only one issue of many. Governments need to recognise that people with intellectual disability are not only valued users of services, but most importantly, citizens with human rights. We need to change our practices and we can start by listening to people with intellectual disability. In my own journey, I have fought to make sure that people with intellectual disabilities are listened to. Though it may take us a little bit longer, but we get there. A small group of people who needed some support to be heard got together and formed the Hot Topics Group. We wanted to be able to speak up for ourselves and to find out about things that mattered to us. There was an organisation being formed and we didn't feel that people with intellectual disabilities were being listened to, so we started Hot Topics. We help each other with the issue of the day, how to become self-advocates and how to stand up for our rights. I don't see myself as a leader, but others tell me I am. I believe in the group. I believe in the power of us working together. We have achieved a lot over the years. I am very proud of the digital stories that we made with Griffith University and the University of Queensland. We stayed true to who we were and what we were about. I was asked by Associate Professor Paul Harris from Griffith University to join in on some work with Donna and other members of Hot Topics to create some digital stories. Digital stories are short stories which allow people to share their message online. I collaborated with Paul and others from Griffith University to work with people with intellectual disability so that they could tell their stories in their own ways and to share their talents. We formed a research team of self-advocates with intellectual disability, university researchers, disability support staff and student volunteers. Nine self-advocates developed their own individual stories and we also created a group story. It was really hard working out the, what the achievements that we wanted to share in our group story. We had so many. What we ended up doing is getting people to list all their achievements on Butcher's paper and then we asked people to vote on the top four achievements and those achievements became part of the group story. And here is an excerpt from that story. We've been mean for 15 years and we discuss every topic from the NDIS to health to employment to transport. Hot Topics means that we can all stand up for our rights both individually and as a group. You have to make sure your complaints get heard, you know, and everyone had to call up. We do get invited to be involved in submissions to the state government mm -hmm. and to the federal government. Yeah. The chance to go to Parliament House and have our own table to speak up who we are for the government. They were there to listen to us. We've done a lot since we've done the digital stories. We connected with self advocates from all over the world, including Canada, Scotland, Ireland, England, India, the Maori people from New Zealand, and the United States. We are connected to every state in Australia except for Western Australia and the Northern Territory. In the past 40 years of fighting for our rights, I believe we are starting to get the benefits of this. ACID, which stands for the Australasian Study for Intellectual Disability, 
You would never have thought we would get a person with intellectual disability on the board of ACID. We spoke up and we said, hey, it needs to happen. We have people with intellectual disabilities being MCs at government conferences. It's been a privilege to work with Donna and other members of the Hot Topics team. Donna and other members remind me of what is truly important. People with intellectual disability are often only seen as recipients of paid care. Donna and others from Hot Topics challenge those assumptions. They demonstrate that people with intellectual disability are contributing citizens to society. They remind us that people with intellectual disability deserve to be listened to, just like anyone else. People with inter intellectual disabilities are starting to, to have a say. Self-advocacy is a passion. It's about the passion to be accepted, to be included and to be part of the community. Looking forward to the future, I want people with intellectual disabilities to have an easier road, but there's still challenges. And people falling through the cracks, like not getting service that they really need or access to the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Being off the grid, still being put into nursing homes, forced to live with people that they don't like. Being subject to strictic practices, and many are still do not have a voice. Advocacy has fought for some closure of hospital wards, but there is still a long way to go. Keep writing letters. It's time they listen to us. And for the people to not to tell us exactly what we want, listen to us, hear us. If we put our minds to it, we can do anything. We can take on the world. We are stronger when we work together. And the world is a better place when we truly listen. <laughs>